What is up? Welcome back to the channel. It's our second video and we're already going down a controversial road. We're talking about swear words. Some people love swearing. Some people absolutely hate swearing, but either way, you can't ignore swear words because they are everywhere throughout media. But it wasn't always that way. While swear words are seen as slightly controversial today, they were extremely controversial back in the day. But over time, things change and swearing became more and more common. And we're gonna talk about the history of that. What was the first movie to feature a swear word? What was the first movie to use this word? This word? What about this word? What about PG and family movies? These are all the topics that we are going to talk about in today's video on the history and evolution of swearing in cinema. But before we get to that, be sure to like and subscribe for more evolution pop culture history videos. Wait, quick disclaimer, we're talking about English movies and specifically major motion pictures. Also, I will not be censoring any of the clips. I will censor myself when I'm talking about bigger words. YouTube has some like weird monetization rules where you can swear in your videos, but you can't swear too much. I don't know if there's like a specific count or whatever. So I'm just gonna limit myself, but the clips will be uncensored. We got this sick timeline and we're gonna go way back to 1916 to the silent era of film. Wait, silent films? How can there be swearing in a movie with no sound? Well, surprisingly, there is actually an instance of swearing in the comedy film, The Habit of Happiness. In the film, the character Sonny Wiggins, portrayed by Douglas Fairbanks, is trying to teach some homeless people in this like Skid Row, Hooverville type of setting, how to laugh. And since there's no sound, Douglas Fairbanks decided to tell some pretty risque jokes to so get some true authentic laughter. This would have been completely fine, however, after the release, many deaf lip readers in the audience noticed that Fairbanks was saying some dirty jokes with some pretty inappropriate words. <laughs> there were several complaints, and the scene had to be reshot with the film re-released. Of course, with the silent era, we also have intertitles slash title cards. You know, the little cards that they have dialogue on to tell the story in silent films. Anyway, were there any swear words used on title cards during the silent film era? Kind of. In the movie Intolerance, also released in 1916, the word hell can be seen towards the end of the film. How scandalous. Okay, but for real, the use of the word damn did appear twice in 1925's The Big Parade. The Big Parade was a war movie, and to add a bit of realism to the chatter amongst soldiers in moments of conflict, they decided to use some more intense words. The first instance was, March and sweat the whole damn day. While another instance was a bit more extreme. In a moment where the enemy shoots one of the soldiers, another character states, They got him! They got him! God damn their souls! Followed by another censored title card saying, You got my buddy, you blanks! Now come on! The blanks is bastards, just FYI. So apparently bastards was not quite appropriate enough for the film, however, damn, was fine. A few other notable silent era swearing incidents that I want to mention include a supposed moment when Harold Lloyd says, oh sh in 1920s, get out and get under. But I don't know, I don't really quite see it. Um, I don't know. Towards the end of the silent era in 1926, there was a scene in Gloria Swanson's Fine Manners where she tells the protagonist, that he can go to blank, and then it shows her mouthing the word hell. Nicely done. It's time to move out of the silent era and into the talky era. The earliest examples of mild swearing came in 1929 with words like hell and damn, and the appearance of these words were more common than you might think. One prominent example is from Paramount Pictures glorifying the American girl. They say damn six times in the movie. One particular instance is during a scene where two tailors are trying to sell a man a jacket, and one of them calls the other tailor a damned fool. You'll be ashamed. I'm you telling you. You've got the finest suit of clothes in the whole. Oh, don't listen to him. He's a damn fool. Go ahead. But I'm telling you. Go ahead. There's also a few jackasses included. Oh, with a stripe. Oh, with a stripe. Sure. Say what you want. There you are. How do you like that? I look like a zebra. Don't talk like a jackass. What is a zebra? In the same year, we get yet another explicit swear word. Perfect day with Laurel and Hardy has a few S words. Take a listen. <laughs> Technically, this isn't a full-length motion picture, but it was distributed by MGM. Mild swearing was featured heavily a year later in 1930 in Howard Hughes' Hell's Angels. I mean, it's in the title. During the dogfight scenes, towards the end, which are really good, there's a lot of damn, and even our first SOB. Hey! Wait, 
did he say son of a Bosch? Son of a Bosch! Another iconic swear comes at the very end of 1931's adaptation of the front page. Although there is no doubt as of to what is being said, the word bitch is slightly obscured by the sound of a typewriter. Why well, I'm a complete description. The son of a stole my watch. <laughs> But major changes were coming to the film industry where swear words would become much more rare. Enter the Motion Pictures Production Code, aka Hayes Code, named after Will H. Hayes, the president of the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America, a precursor to the modern MPAA. You see, as the popularity of motion pictures grew throughout the 20s, concerns of explicit and shocking film content also began to grow, and these concerns were expedited with the introduction of sound. Due to these concerns, a list of do's and don'ts was created by the MPPDA. This was not enforced, and it was seen more as a list of recommendations recommendations. Movie censorship was actually more of a local policy at the time. So while some cities allowed brief moments of explicit content, other communities didn't. Therefore, different versions of the same film would be sent to different localities, depending on said locality's censorship policy. However, in 1930, outspoken critics such as Jesuit priest Father Daniel A. Lord and Catholic layman Martin Quigley, founder of the Exhibitors Herald, became increasingly concerned about films and their effect on young children. These men and other concerning members of the public put pressure on studio heads which led to the creation of the Production Code in 1930. The Production Code prohibited explicit content including profanity, however it wasn't seriously enforced. That was until July 1st, 1934. After that date, films were required to obtain a certificate of approval from the Production Code Administration before being released. This was the beginning of Code Era Hollywood. Swear words and other forms of explicit content practically vanished in major motion pictures at this point. However, there were a few films that got away with it. Perhaps the most well-known film to swear during the Code Era was Gone with the Wind, released in 1939. In fact, it's one of the most famous film lines of all time. Check it out. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Truly an iconic line, iconic enough to have its own Wikipedia page. But how were they able to get away with this? Well, legend has it that MPPDA fined producer David O. Selznick $5,000 for using the word. However, it's worth noting that the MPPDA actually passed an amendment to the production code a month and a half before the film's release on November 1st, 1939. This amendment allowed use of the words hell or damn but only when their use, quote, shall be essential and required for portrayal in proper historical context, end quote. All right, enough of these tame words. We're moving on to the more hard-hitting swear words, words like when did those start to appear? Well, way back in 1933, the F word might have been heard on the Warner Brothers cartoon series, Bosco's Picture Show. Or is he saying Fox? Have a listen. The official subtitles say Fox, but I'm not convinced. The first use of the F word in a movie came in 1967 with the release of Ulysses, a film loosely based on James Joyce's 1922 novel. I had to hug him after. Oh lord, I wanted to shout out all sorts of things, fuck or shit or anything at all. Two for one there with the word sh also being spoken. Later that year, a slightly censored F word can be heard in the universal film I'll Never Forget What's It Saying. Now the last two films were pretty minor films, however the first major motion picture to feature the F word would come in 1970 in the film M.A.S.H. The word is spoken during a football game near the end of the film. Alright bub, your fucking head is coming right off. The first use of the S word in the modern era comes from the film In Cold Blood released in 1967. And the first bullsh came in the 1968 film Bullet. Frank, we must all compromise. Bullshit. Also worth mentioning, Easy Rider from 1969 has the first middle finger gesture. In 1968, the production code slash Hayes code was replaced by the MPAA rating system, which we are all familiar with today. This meant that major movies were now free to do what they wished, and the appropriate rating system would be assigned. On top of that, there were major cultural shifts occurring in the late 60s. Many were not happy with the Vietnam War. In fact, a popular protest at the time was, one, two, three, four, we don't want your f 
Vietnam War. With the F-word's first appearance in a mainstream film, the transition to the MPAA's rating system, and a cultural shift in general, the use of profanity in movies skyrocketed in the early 70s. But we really need to talk about The Exorcist. This Warner Brothers horror classic was released in 1973 and went on to become the highest grossing film of that year. And there's a lot of profanity in it, including the effort which was used 13 times. And you might be thinking, well that's nothing compared to today. But you gotta remember this was the most successful film of that year. In fact, I can't remember the last time the highest grossing film of any year had that many F words. Also that same year, the king of profanity himself, Martin Scorsese, released Mean Streets with 49 instances of the F word. Of course, the F word is not the worst swear word in the English language. There is another word that people hate even more. The first use of this was in 1971 by none other than Jack Nicholson in Carnal Knowledge. Of course it was Jack Nicholson. In terms of popular movies, the use of profanity would continually rise throughout the 70s and 80s and would eventually peak in the 90s mostly thanks to Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese. <clears throat> Pulp Fiction, Casino, Goodfellas. Speaking of Martin Scorsese, you'll notice a little blip on this chart from 2014. Well, that's The Wolf of Wall Street, the most profane popular movie of all time, with 569 F words, 82 S words, and even one use of the word stupid. From the use of damn and Gone with the Wind in 1939, to 569 uses of in The Wolf of Wall Street. We've come a long way. So much so that the impact of these words have kind of lost their power. In Gone with the Wind, when he says, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. I felt that. It was powerful. It hit hard. But if you're going to swear 300 plus times in a movie, you kind of don't notice it. It honestly has the same effect as not swearing at all. Thankfully, profanity still holds quite a bit of power when it comes to PG-13 movies. It's a long-held myth that every PG-13 movie is allowed one F-word. That's mostly true, but technically The Martian has two, as well as a few other select movies. The MPAA judges each film on a case-by-case -case basis, but usually you're only allowed one use. And when you only have one use, you really gotta make it count. For example, I love the wall-breaking effort in the PG-13 film, Be Cool. Do you know that unless you're willing to use the R rating, you can only say the F word once? You're kidding me. No. You know what I say? Fuck that. I'm done. And who could forget the legendary Wolverine cameo in X-Men First Class? Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Filmmakers can overdo it. South Park's Bigger, Longer, and Uncut was initially rated NC-17 due to too much profanity. Trey Parker and Matt Stone had to change and resubmit the film six times before the MPAA would finally lower the rating to R. What about PG movies? What about family movies? Well, no G-rated movies have swearing, but there are a few cases in PG movies. PG movies can get away with the light usage of hell, damn, and on rare occasions, sh Back to the Future is a perfect example of that. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Somehow the F word did make it into 1989's Beetlejuice, which is a PG movie. I don't know how Warner Brothers got away with it, considering the PG-13 rating was already in use. You're working with a professional here! Nice fucking model! But yeah, this is the only PG movie I can find that actually uses the F word. Well, there you have it. That's the history of swear words in cinema. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.